I'm riding, I'm vibing. Keep that same energy when I press by again. I'm riding, I'm vibing. You lost a good one and you can't remember why again. I'm riding, I'm vibing. Keep that same energy. <clears throat> All right, hey y'all. So I'm here to just kind of go over my prices. I had my um okay i don't know um i had my face-to-face -face interview today with an airline so i am going to tell y'all the name just because it ain't work out so it don't even matter so the regional airline that i was applying for was endeavor they've been around for about seven years i believe is what i could see like as far back i don't know how old the airline actually is i was gonna look it up but it's a regional airline meaning they don't go like international i believe um i'm out of breath i just ran upstairs how old is endeavor yeah um girl i lied endeavor ain't been around a long time child Oh, they named something else. So, they got renamed to 2013. So, that's what I found. Um, but the, they were founded in 1985. Whatever hell. So, I applied for them. Y'all should already know what they process is based off the previous videos that I post um, about the hiring process. So, basically, you fill out your application. Um... Of course, you got to have your passport, have applied for, have your vaccine, um, or have started the vaccination process, or started your passport process if you don't have all those things already done. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? I'm having a brain fart, y'all. So, that's the initial, like, hiring process, your application. Then, you're supposed to do, I think I skipped some steps, y'all. I don't remember. I don't know, but I just did the face-to-face -face interview so they do your face-to-face -face first where they like fingerprint you background check you see if you can fit in um i mean like if you can reach the height requirement just to go over all the requirement things right um and then after that you would have if you've moved past get a video interview and then after that your job offer and training so now, when it comes to flight attendants, I don't know if this is every single airline, do not quote me, but I do know a lot of them have a tattoo policy, meaning they cannot be visible. It is fine, from my understanding, as long as they can be covered, right? This is what, what I was told. I do have a sleeve. Anybody who, you know, watch me, like, on social media or my previous um YouTube channel, I have a sleeve. I have a full sleeve. And so, anytime I'm doing any type of professional interview, I wear a long sleeve. Well, not anytime because I ain't been applying for no bad job, child. But I wear a long sleeves um, or like a blazer or something to cover up because although none of my tattoos are offensive to me, um, they are also just, you know, for some whatever reason, controversial to the world, tattoos are not considered to be professional. I don't know why. Um, cause why is makeup not professional? Why are lashes not professional? The things that you use to enhance your body, whatever. That is their rule for a lot of airlines. I don't know about all, but probably the majority that you can't have any like visible tattoos as a flight attendant unless can be covered, right? This is the only like visible tattoo on my body that's not covered with clothing. Um... Because, like, I can wear a skirt. I can even wear, like, I know you don't wear shorts to work. But just so that y'all know how small or, like, kind of, like, placement idea where my tattoos are. Of course, I have my sleeve. I have a tattoo on my spine. um, And I have a tattoo on my hip, my right hip. But it's so far up that it could be covered with some shorts. Um, So, of course, I could wear skirts to work, things like that. I just wouldn't particularly wear nothing but long sleeves which tend to work for me in a lot of work environments because I'm always cold anyway. So, it's not a problem. This is the only visible tattoo that I have. It's three little hearts. It's not any words. It's not any, like, 
weird demonic shapes or nothing like that. It's just three hearts. Um, it's a matching tattoo that me and my sister have. Um, and that my younger sister will get whatever she and I'll get out there. So, it said it can be covered. And you just cover if you can. This was covered with makeup. It can be covered with makeup. Um, so, I covered it with makeup. She asked me. Um, did I have any visible tattoos that can't be covered? I said no. That was the honest truth. My tattoos can be covered. Now, my sleeve, if this was like our uniform couldn't be covered or we had to absolutely wear a short sleeve, nah, because I'm not covering this with makeup, baby. I ain't nothing I could do about this. This ain't the job for me. But this little thing, yeah, we can cover that. So, we get ready to do the fingerprint part. So... They're, they're checking your hands and everything, right? Um, and she asks, you know, what tattoos do you have covered? My hand. That's what I got covered, okay? And she was like, um, dang, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me tell you how, how when I walked in. I went too fast, too far, right? So I walked into my interview. They have this desk sitting outside with this lady at the desk. Lady at the desk was very rude, very blunt, giving very ratchet. I don't know, just rude. Like, she just had a really stank attitude. It was very unpleasant. So, I go to the desk. Um, the greeting wasn't all that good. Like, I really just expected a whole lot more. I'm not even going to lie. I really expected a whole lot more. Um, considering the places that I have worked, I've worked at some pretty prestigious, professional, like big places and to come to something like an airline that's supposedly owned by Delta, which is an airline I advocate for. I love me some Delta. But if these are people who is a representation of what y'all supposed to be, they giving y'all a bad rip, Delta. I'm gonna let you know they're giving you a bad, bad rip. I ain't appreciate it. Anyway, so it was just real lackluster, like real boring real giving real principal office not like exciting opportunity not good job interview not telling us something you know the great things about the company it was just real lackluster um it gave real lazy boring no thought no no initiative nothing so she's like you just go sit in that room they say whatever you say i can't remember what it said explorer sit in that room fill out the paper on the thing only fill out the stuff in yellow and then bring you back so I go in the room, like not too much instruction. Okay, I'll take it, whatever, whatever. Fill out my paperwork. I come back, it's someone at the desk. So I see the other girl pulling out her um, two forms of ID and the copies and then the physicals of those documents. So um, I had a copy of my driver's license front and back. I had a copy of my social security card, a copy of my birth certificate. Uh, I had a copy of my vaccination card as well as a copy of my receipt for my passport because I don't have a physical passport. So they said, bring a copy of the receipt showing that you started the passport. Um, I didn't have my physical birth certificate because to do your passport, you have to send off your birth certificate, but I had my license and my social, but I gave them an extra copy of the birth certificate just to have, right? Boom, boom, boom. So I burnt, get ready to bring all my stuff. So I saw the other girl pulling out hers. So I had my packet that she had me fill out, right? It was on the table in the room. I had all those copies and I had my physicals um, to show her. So I, um, she asked me, she was like, you can come on. And I come up to the table. She's writing something. So I just, you know, set them all on the desk because I'm trying to zip my purse because I just dug in to get my wallet and all the stuff out. Um, and she goes, um, no, I just need the packet first. Okay, it's odd because for one, it's on the table. Grab it. You know, you didn't have to be whatever that that was. It gave rude, and if that was what your intent was, for why? Um, so she just said that she didn't pick it up, so I picked it up. Here you go. Now you can give me your copies. Okay. Okay, and your, your uh, what she said, okay, and the originals. 
like that with that attitude like the expressions and tones that i'm giving you that's what it was and i'm like oh my god what, what did i do who pissing your cereal like why are you you know i'm not understanding she was like okay you can go wait in the room and someone will call you okay i'm trying to keep calm even though y'all i was ready to mm -mm, ready to tick because I'm a very professional person, but when I'm in a professional setting and I'm not getting professionalism back, it irks my soul. So, so, so bad. So, I go sit in the room and I wait. I'm like, okay, this is just HR. I don't have to deal with these people on a daily basis. So, let me just go do what I need to do, handle my business and get about it. I go and I, I sit in the room. The lady eventually called my day. So, the lady, first of all, the lady did stuff out of order, apparently. Cause she asking me all these questions, read me all these forms. Um, can you travel outside the United States? Uh, have you had any DUIs and so on, so so and so? It's asking me all these questions before she got to the tattoo thing. And then when she asked, um, what happened? You know, cause I covered it like I'm supposed to, cause you can't have any visibles. Um, she was like. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Like, some people may say, you know, you could have just fibbed it or could have just, you know, told it. But we had to do the fingerprint thing anyway, which they're going to make you wash your hands. Or that's what they had us do. Wash them, you know, make sure your hands are clean. No oil or nothing like that. And you're going to fingerprint. So, I wasn't going to lie because it was going to come off anyway. Then I was going to look like a liar. But I don't see the point in lying anyway. Y'all see it long as it can be covered. It can be. With this much makeup, literally, one swipe, and it's covered. She asked, and I told her I have, you know, hearts here, shoulder. Um, and she was like, oh, um, what did she say? Oh, I wish I would have asked that before I did all this. Woosa. She was like, um you can't have that and i'm like um so it can't be covered with makeup no it can't be covered with makeup it can't be covered with a band-aid you can't have it at all you need to get it removed need i feel like it could have been you know um this is our unfortunately i do apologize this is our policy um you do have a couple options um, you could try a different airline. That's just our policy. Or if you would ever be interested in getting re removed, you could come back. That wasn't what it gave. It was, you need to get it removed. Then you can return. It's just something about the way these people were talking to me that was bugging me bad. And uh, I was like, really? It can't just be? No. Let's go get a second opinion then. So she takes us in the room with this other person. Now I feel like y'all just parading a little black girl around. I'm not even going to lie to you. I feel real. Mm -mm. And the lady who did this part of my process was a black woman. Um, I remember her name, but I ain't going to say no name. So she was like, um, took me in the room to this other guy. And he looked at my hand. I got my hand out. So you could see, you could see, you could see that this is a heart. Why you, t why you touch me? Cause now y'all bothering me. He grabs my hand. Mm -mm. It's a tattoo. First off, what you rubbing? Why are you touching me? Better yet. And so, um, yeah, so she gave me all my paperwork and stuff back and was like, well, whenever you get it removed, you can return. And I don't know, it gave very much like you was put playing me down or putting me in the chapel. I don't know. I ain't like that. So I got ready to leave or whatever. Now, in the email, it said that they was going to validate our park. We get there, or I get back to the car. Mind y'all, I'm heated. I'm irritated because their whole process was just mm, to me. Get to the car, go to the thing. It said $25 for parking because they had us there for three hours. Right? Three hours. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't even that many people. It was maybe 15 people in there. And I said that for three hours. Which made my parking $25. I'm like, mm, I forgot my valet. I'm going to get there. They gonna have to, they, they need to cover this. So I go in there because y'all done wasted my time. And irritated me. Messed up my morning. 
I go in back in second time baby I had to took my blazer off took my heels off put my crocs on because at this point for what it, it doesn't even matter um y'all ain't for me and I ain't for y'all that's just what it is right so I go back in here and I you know go to the the, the lady at the desk me and the rude lady should have found somebody who was with child she was there so I'm like um my do you guys have the ticket for the parking or do I get it from the front she was like no I'm like dude so no I get it which one she was like no we we're not validating parking I'm like um excuse me she said the hotel said that they couldn't do it i said no not no ma'am i'm not asking a hotel to validate my parking i'm asking you guys endeavor no like that with the the, the smear on her face no mm -mm, we're not doing that while she eating her cookie and i just really wanted to as unprofessional as this sounds, I'm also human. Got it. I just really wanted to snatch the tablecloth off and just ugh, pull all the stuff off the table. Because why did I feel like this whole time y'all all played in my face and irritated me and messed up my day? But I stay professional. And I walked away. I did. So proud of me. And I still had to pay twenty five dollars parking. I really want. I was really upset. Um, overall, Endeavor Air is not for me. It does not have my recommendation. Um, it may work for some people, but it was giving very mediocre, very lackluster. Like it didn't make me excited to want to come work for them. They didn't like, you know, tell us nothing about the company. Um, it's mm, bad experience. It was that was the worst interview experience I've ever had in my life. And I've dealt with some racist people during interviews. I've dealt with rude people. I've dealt with a lot of different types of people, but I never dealt with all of that at once. Like that was the worst interview I've ever done in my life. Um, so yeah, I can't, I can't recommend the company to anybody i wouldn't um there are other regional airlines that y'all could try for um uh, i'm not gonna recommend them neither because i don't know what those things are but you know just try some other places i would just steer away from them um and maybe that's just my experience i want to do mine here in atlanta um so maybe if you do your face to face maybe if you just deal with a whole different batch of people it might be different but mm -mm. If these are the sets of people that y'all have on staff anyway, I don't want no dealing. I don't care where it's at. I just don't. And um, I don't know if this will get that far, but Delta, do something. Because the group of people that I dealt with for this recruitment face-to-face um, -face day, mm-mm. These are not showing, they are not, they do not give a good representation of the company. And I know they are outside of Delta technically because it's a subsidiary, but mm -mm. look, no, I ain't like it. Would never apply for them again. Um, yeah, the whole experience just wasn't for me. So, but yeah, so that's the end of this video. Um, I'm not done with my flight attendant journey. I do, you know, have applied at other airlines and things like that. And then and, and am in the process of some more interviews and face-to-face -face and things like that. This one just the, wasn't the one for me. And it sucked so bad because it was the first one I had done for this career field. I just expected a little bit more. Um, even if I hadn't got the job, I wish that the process or the the people that, that made this part. Mm, I just wish it was different, you know. Um So, yeah. So, yeah, that was my experience applying for Endeavor Air as a flight attendant. Um, and so, if anybody ever deals with this when it comes to not even just flight attendant, but any job and an interview goes bad or, you know, something within the company, don't let it stop, you know, from whatever that industry is. That just, that might not be the company or the field for you, baby. Um, 
and this is you know what my family was telling me because i was kind of stung a little bit that this is how it turned out for me being the first one because i do have like i said other ones lined up but it's like dang the first one turned out like this i'm kind of concerned but um like my family was telling me don't be you know i started this whole process i've gotten vaccinated or you know started my vaccination process got my passport so those nothing was for no reason um it's just this wasn't the one and that you know those things that i prepared to do for this job i'm probably still going to need for something maybe for another airline a better airline it may be for you know because i'm just gonna take a trip out the country you don't know what or why your process turned out like this when you even though you've done everything right um so yeah keep y'all heads up out there all of my entrepreneurs my go-getters my business owners um anybody who hopping from industry to industry field to field ain't nothing wrong with that figure out what's for you try as many different things as you want um and just continue to do what you love so yes i'm out trying to get a bag and dip cause see i